would be so easy to think that two decades after the original Pokemon Snap, the magic of seeing Pokemon living their lives in a more natural, lifelike setting would have worn off. But having seen a 30-minute virtual hands-off preview of new Pokemon Snap, I can say firmly, no, absolutely not. Seeing Pokemon in the wild is still a dang treat. My tour of new Pokemon Snap took me through its beach level twice, first during the day and then again at night when different Pokemon appear. I'm not sure if the beach is the first level or not, but it is in many ways a clear homage to the similar opening biome of the original game. Crab brawlers laze about near the water, executors lumber along among palm trees, and blossoms lurk in tropical foliage, easily lured out with a fluff fruit or a bit of music. I saw returning faces too, like a cheerful Pikachu trotting across the sand and a dreamy Lapras in the distance. Despite having seen the same level at two different times a day, I feel I haven't even scratched the surface of what's in it. For one thing, the beach had a branching path midway through that I wasn't allowed to see an entire sight of, and I'm sure there were Pokemon lurking in the water or bushes that we didn't get around to luring out. And there are curious secrets too, like mysterious Krista Bloom flowers dotted about that seem to hold some interest for wild Pokemon. Much of new Pokemon Snap's gameplay revolves around trying to elicit interesting reactions from the Pokemon you can encounter, all the better to snap exciting photos. That doesn't just mean tossing about your arsenal of tools, such as the aforementioned music and fluff fruit or light up Illumina orbs. It also means searching for ways to lure Pokemon into clever situations or interactions, such as when the presenter used the new scan feature to attract the attention of a Corsola and a Pukamuku, causing them both to cheer and wave excitedly as we passed by. Every Pokemon interaction I saw, and there were quite a few in this single short stretch of level, was simply stuffed with personality and so many evoked genuine laughter or cheers from me when I saw them react in a surprising, cute, or ridiculous way to whatever stimuli were thrown out. At the end of each course, photos taken are submitted to Professor Mirror to aid his research. Points are awarded for the Pokémon's pose, size, the direction they're facing, their placement in the photo, the background, and whether or not there are other Pokémon around. Your goal is to eventually fill out a photo dex of every Pokemon in the lentil region, including up to four possible actions each individual Pokemon can be found doing. These actions are graded according to how challenging it is to entice the Pokemon to do it, effectively adding an extra level of challenge and puzzle beyond just seeking out every Pokemon you can find. Following Mirror's grading, you can go back to previously taken photos and edit them using the resnap feature before sharing them with friends. This includes zooming in and out and adjusting the photo in case you want a better angle on a cute Pokemon pose, as well as applying filters, goofy stickers, and other effects. The system appears decently robust, if still perhaps wisely limited to curb abuse of online features. I cannot wait to see what ridiculous snaps people flood social media with on launch day. There's a real, heartfelt care clearly being taken here by developer Bandai Namco to present the Pokémon in its photo safari as real, personable, lovable, and alive. I'm very optimistic that this consideration will bear out in new Pokémon Snap's other levels, and I can't wait to start flinging fluff fruit in every nook and cranny myself just to see what surprising friends pop out to say hi. For more Pokémon Snap, and for everything else Pokémon, keep it locked on IGN.